Hi everyone! Let's use the Godot shading language to recreate an effect that falls into the category of a large number of small objects following a trajectory. It consists of simple elements, in this case ellipses, that orbit along certain curves and together create interesting looking patterns. So let's get started. Ok, let's start recreating a scene where we will as usual add a color rect, set its parameters and create a shader material. Right click, uh, create new scene, let's call it ellipsis, ok, uh, right click at child node color rect and in the inspector the usual dimensions, uh, no, transform uh, 600 by 400. And as for the material, uh, new shader material, click new shader, ellipsis GD shader, canvas item, and I'll put it to the shaders folder. Okay, create, and click again to open in the editor. Very well, and as usual, we'll delete everything we don't need, leaving only the fragment function. Okay, expand, and deleting vertex, deleting light. Just move this a little bit up. Okay, uh, I think we haven't worked with ellipses in previous tutorials, so at least we have something new. Drawing an ellipse is very similar to drawing a circle, with the difference being that an ellipse is not defined by a single radius, but by two semi-axes. The equation of such an ellipse uh, looks like this and we'll use this formula in our calculations. So, let's start by creating a function ellipse, which will take three parameters. The UV coordinates of the current pixel, the center of the ellipse, and its dimensions. But before we do that, we'll set up two uniform parameters to control these ellipses, size and thickness. Uniform, vec2, ellipse size and it would be default value uh, vec2 let's say 1 and 0.5 okay and uh, the thickness so uniform float thickness with a hint range and the initial value 0.5 and the thickness would be from 0.1 to 1 and point zero 0.01 as the step. Ok, and now the mentioned function for calculating the ellipse. We'll use the formula I showed at the beginning and compute the thickness using the smooth step function. Let's add it here. Float ellipse with the parameters vec2 uv, vec2 center, and the vec2 size. And now the formula float formula is power uh, uvx minus center x to the power of 2 divided by again power and size x, the first semi axis to the power of 2. Okay. And we need to add and put it to the next row to make it better readable. UVY minus center Y to the power of 2 divided by size Y to the power of 2. Uh, dot, sorry. Okay, and we need to return uh, the result of the smooth step function as I mentioned so it would be return smooth step of the parameter thickness thickness the second edge is zero and the weight factor is one absolute value of one minus formula because 
it could be a negative number so we'll need to choose an absolute value all right so we'll display the eclipse in the fragment function since we want to create a symmetrical pattern i'll shift the coordinate origin to the center and draw an <coughs> sorry <laughs> draw an ellipse with its center at it at its origin finally i'll color it white which is a temporary solution as we will later change the colors based on time so here in the fragment function let's start by shifting the origin of coordinates to the center and load let's call it ellipsis because uh, at the final stage we will have all ellipses in this one variable added up and now the temporary color color would be as i said just to white one 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 okay and ellipses are increased by the result of the function ellipse <coughs> uh, ellipse here with uv coordinates as i said uh, we'll put it to the center so let's just make it zero zero vector and the ellipse size and i think it is too big so let's just multiply that by 0.1 okay and finally color is vector 4 of the ellipsis value and we need a vector here so let's multiply that by color and final value alpha is one wait for it okay here it is we have our first ellipse and we can try changing the parameters in the inspector to make sure our ellipse function is correct okay let's increase the size at the x direction or decrease let's try the y direction and the thickness very well i think everything works as expected all right so how do we add more ellipses we'll put this line uh, this one inside a loop and change their center using trigonometric functions which will create a nice circular path for the ellipses to follow or rather an elliptical path because as you may have noticed i don't adjust the aspect ratio according to the dimensions of the color rack this time so let's start with 10 ellipses let's put it here <clears throat> so it would be four float i from uh, from zero to as i said 10 ellipses so to 10 and i plus plus okay and now we need to set up the coordinates of the ellipse center so let's put um, the components cos and i said we'll use trigonometric functions so first one would be cosine of the <coughs> index i uh, for y let's choose sine and we can define the center uh, back to uh, center is vec2 x and y all right and finally we will take on this line uh, we will take this line and improve this part because now we have a center vector okay very well we can't see anything because everything is outside our rectangle so let's add a zoom parameter and set it to two uh, let's do it here uniform float zoom with a hand range and the initial value would be two and let's make it from 0.1 to for example 10 and the step 0 0.01 and let's use it in the code fragment function and here we will simply multiply uv by the zoom factor okay very well that's better maybe we should zoom out a bit more let's put it to i don't know to this to seven eight 
Okay, <clears throat> however, it seems that the gaps between the ellipses are too large and some have already completed their entire path around this uh, circle. This is because the arguments of the sine and cosine are too large. So let's multiply them by 0.1. Multiplied by 0.1. Okay, that's much better. And I think we can add a parameter to control the number of ellipses. Let's call it steps. I'll do it here. So uniform float steps with a hint range and let's set it to 100. Okay. And again from point 0.1 to let's say 200. Okay, and the step can be 0.1 because um, we are supposed to use uh, larger numbers than in the others, uh, in other other uniform parameters. Okay, and we use it in the code. So instead of 10, let's just add steps. Okay, now we can change the number of ellipses and observe the result. So let's do it. Yeah. Seems to be working. Notice that when I uh, set the steps parameter around uh, 6.28 um, or the tenfold of that, which roughly corresponds to twice pi times 10, uh, we almost complete the circle. Therefore, it would be better to use pi directly in this calculation. So let's do it here times pi. All right, and now if I set steps to then we should have held the circle. Cool. Very well. So I think it's time for the ellipses to start moving. Let's add a speed parameter again to the top. So uniform float speed uh, in range and the start value would be one and we can make it from zero to 10. And this time let's put, let's make the step point zero one and I'll use it in the fragment function. So first, uh, let me define the time variable using speed. It would be float time is time times speed. All right. And we'll improve the sine and cosine functions. So right here, let's just add time and time. Great, we have movement. We're basically done. And now we have plenty of small improvements ahead. The first thing we'll do is to uh, is refine the trajectory. The ellipses will move along. We'll introduce two more parameters. <clears throat> Form float, let's call it x cof. It will be a just coefficient uh, for the x coordinate with the end range and it would be set by default to 0 0.6 and I'll make it from 0 to 1 with the step point 0 0.01 and <coughs> the y cof right here and the default value let's put to 0 0.8 and just fix it here Okay, as we can see, I've set the default values to different numbers to achieve at least some irregularity in the movement. Now we'll add these coefficients to the sine and cosine function. Let's scroll down and right here, I think we can yeah, multiply it here. So x cof times 0.1 and y cof multiplied by 0.1. Now it should be enough to set the steps parameter back to 100. And we'll see what we saw at the beginning of the video. Here it is. Yeah, here we go. It's also a bit smaller because we had the zoom parameter set to two earlier, and now it's roughly uh, 2.7. So what's left? We want to improve the colors a bit, specifically so that they change over time. For this, we'll use trigonometric functions again, which uh, will apply to the individual RGB components. 
something like this. Okay, let's start with the red component. Float red would be simply sign of the time variable uh, here. And float green, let's use cosine to give it some phase shift. And finally, float blue would be, let's say again, sign of time. Very well. And now the color is no longer a white color. We will compose it uh, of these three um, components, red, green, blue. Wait for it. OK, looks like it's working, but as you have just noticed, um, sometimes it fades to black, so it might be even better if the color components change at different frequencies. But however, there is another problem. This is happening because the values of sine and cosine uh, range from negative 1 to 1, whereas for color components, we need them to be between 0 and 1. So we can easily achieve this by multiplying the result by 0.5 and adding 0.5 times 0.5 plus 0.5. This is the red one, and let's fix the other ones. OK. This is much better. And it will be even better if, as I said, we will change the frequency. So let's try, for example, this. Let's keep the red one as it is and uh, make the green one a little bit slower, multiplied by 0.9, and for the blue uh, time, multiplied by 0.8. OK, very well. I think we are almost there. We can try changing the parameters, for example, increasing the speed. Where is the speed? Here. OK. Uh, by the way, it might not be very noticeable in the video, but it appears that the last ellipse blends with the first one, making it a bit more prominent. We can fix this by reducing the steps from uh, 100 to 99.9. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it should uh, enter. And it should be gone. Yeah, I suppose so. Of course, the solution only works for this specific set of coefficients. We can change our values and observe how they affect the overall trajectory. So let's get back to the original speed. And, uh, sorry, that was steps, not speed, this one. And let's change, for example, x. Yeah, we can see how it's changing. Or y. OK, can be very interesting. And well, uh, what about if we change the thickness or the ellipse size? This is very nice. OK, let's go back to the original values. Cool. Thank you so much for watching. This effect probably doesn't have much use in games and is more of an explanation of some basic techniques we can apply when creating shaders. On the other hand, if our game takes place in a room with a computer, such ellipses could be used as a screensaver, for example. I'm sure we'll come up with something. For now, take care, good luck with your projects, and I'll see you in the next video.